Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. I love this time of year. Here we are, heading into December, and Christmas will be here with us before we can say Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We're going to be out at the shops or online, thank goodness for the Black Friday sales, hunting for Christmas presents to give the people that we love so that we can make them happy and show them that we love them. Presents are a tradition at Christmas, but is it the truth that all people feel loved when receiving presents? For some people, gifts are not always messages of love. Gifts are just that, gifts. For others, gifts are a way and means of getting something that they might need. But for certain people, gifts fill them with the feeling of being loved. Do you want to show your family how much you love them? Not just at Christmas, but every day of the year. What is the gift that you can give them that will make them feel loved? Is it just a material gift? I'm Kate Mason and welcome to Parenting and Personalities. This is the podcast that connects you to the ones you care about the most. Christmas is a great time to revisit Gary Chapman's five love languages. An intuitive friend of mine pointed out recently that there are probably a lot more than the five love languages that Gary Chapman has introduced to the world. However, his work shone us a different perspective on love and its meaning for individuals and the effect it can have on people's relationships if we feel truly loved. The five love languages impact most relationships and many of us are still unaware of the differences in giving and receiving love. Let's take a quick look at these love languages and how we can use them to bring joy in our Christmas celebrations. The five love languages are the following, not in any specific order. Affirmations, gifts, acts of service, quality time, and physical touch. It took years and years of marriage counselling for Gary Chapman to work out what helped keep people together. What was the glue in relationships? How did people feel loved? If you want to find out how you and your partner can love really differently, you can listen to my earlier love language discussion with Karen Tui Boys, if you'd like to go back and check that one out. Just a brief overview. Gary believes that we usually have a good mm, 18 months to two years, maybe much less for some, of being in that euphoric first stage of love. Do you remember that? It's about the time that we fall out of love and need to start thinking about how to stay in love with our partner that now counts. In that initial stage, we've thrown all of our five love languages at the other person. We give gifts, no matter what the cost. We shower them with affection, physical touch, holding hands, hugs, back rubs, and all the rest that comes with that. We have cosy, intimate dinners where we gaze into each other's eyes and we spend a lot of quality time together. We tell each other how amazing we are because we haven't wanted to look for any faults. Well. Not yet, anyway. We provide acts of service. We clean up around the house. Everything's pristine and in place. We bring cups of tea in bed and cook. Well, if we really have to. Very rarely do we try to identify what works best for us or the other person. And when we reach that time where one, or both of us, suddenly change back to their real selves, and time to pursue love really begins, we don't know what's hit us. Now, as I described in my earlier podcast, if we know what our love languages are and what our partners is, we have the knowledge to be able to give them the love that they really need and enjoy it. Gary Chapman talks about everyone having a love tank. Now, look, it's a bit like a petrol tank. When it's empty and there's nothing left, you actually can't go on. Same with humans. Therefore, we aim to not just keep our love tanks full, but for those of our offspring as well. Everyone wants to feel loved but we all have different ways of getting there. I'm going to talk about our kids' love languages today, but everything I say applies to adults too. But the one thing I need you to know right now is that parenting is automatically an acts of service vocation, whether it's your love language or not. You have enrolled for full-time service. You have a contract for a minimum of 18 years, and this might continue, and believe me, it does, 
in a lesser capacity for many years moving forward. Acts of service is physically and emotionally demanding and you need to take care of yourself. I spoke to someone recently whose love languages were affirmation and gifts and she felt she was drowning in the role of everyday duties and looking after others and she was finding it hard to stay emotionally afloat. It was only being aware of her love languages and recognising what they were and seeking to find and do the things that filled her love tank did she manage to keep her head above water, so to speak, and begin to enjoy life again. Hang in there, find out what your two top love languages are and make sure you're able to fill your tank with those love languages to keep you emotionally well for the parenting journey. My husband and I both happen to have acts of service as our top love language, which really works for us. Whenever we're inside or washing dishes, cleaning up the garden, taking care of others and helping people, we're at our happiest because we're both giving each other and others our love language. We spend a fair chunk of our lives tidying up our kids' bedroom, as parents do, because when you're a parent, you know, sadly, even if your love language isn't acts of service, you are stuck doing these tasks. And sometimes we parents feel very resentful. However, if it's your thing, which it is ours, it usually feels okay. Well, that is until someone really doesn't appreciate what you're doing and messes up something you've just cleaned or drops their clothes on the floor. Ah, the list goes on. As many parents do, Paul and I spent many years nagging because our children never tidy anything up. Honestly, even as adults, there isn't really an ounce of acts of service in them. It wasn't until Cassie was 13 years old I finally worked out her love language when a friend of mine spoke to her and told her how wonderful she was and what a great job she'd done. She literally glowed. Boy, I'd miss that one. I was so busy waiting for her to help me. She actually loves being affirmed and praised. Once I started looking at love languages, I realised how much she also enjoyed gifts. She would always ask me what I was going to buy her when I left the house. And as a person that doesn't find presents particularly important, I would think, really? Why would I get her anything? It's not her birthday. I went through the love language quiz with both children and sure enough, she was affirmation and gifts and Jack's love languages were quality time and physical touch. Bummer. Paul and I had been loving them with our acts of service and neither of our children were feeling the love, so to speak. There were no full love tanks in our house. Be aware that particularly during teen years is a time that children can often go somewhere to find love in inappropriate places. So it's really important to ensure your child or your teen's love tank is full to the brim. So today I want to discuss how we can fill our kids' love tanks, as I was obviously not doing, with a deliberate focus on love languages that are not our own. How can we give them the gift of love this Christmas along with the hundreds of gifts that you're going to give them anyway? You know what? Most of us enjoy a gift. If I get gifts, I love it because I love to use my gifts, but it really doesn't set me on fire. But is it my favourite love language? No. On Christmas Day, the greatest gift anyone can give me is after I've finished cooking, they tidy up. If they clean everything up, put it all away, I feel so loved. And finally, my kids get it. Since they've moved into their own homes, they can understand what it's like to clean up. And even though it's not their love language, it is an act of service that they have to do for themselves every day now. So it's become automatic for them. Hooray! Let's take a look at your kids and mine and see if we can work out how you can work out what their love language is. Now, the thing that Gary Chapman says about kids is we don't know whether it's nature or nurture with love languages, but he says you can pretty quickly find out what kind of love language they have by at least the age of four. So as parents, we need to be looking and listening. Listen, first of all, to what their responses are to anything that you do for them. Are they grateful? Do they care about what you've done? And what is it that they complain about the most? When you're thinking about this, think about what applies to your partner as well. My son loves quality time. When Jack was young, I used to make time for cuddles on the couch. We would sit for long periods of time and chat, or just sit in silence and be. I used to sit on his bed before he went to sleep, and we'd discuss his day. He would tell me things that he told no one else, (laughs) but always with a reminder not to tell anyone because he really knew that I liked to talk. I would keep his secrets. 
As an adult, his favourite time is when we're out at coffee and one-on-one and he has our whole attention. No phones, no TV, just us. And that's how he feels the most love. He's taught me a lot about people and differences, especially because he's also an introvert and I'm an extrovert. If your child feels loved with quality time, make sure there is no television or phones around the place to distract you and a conversation that makes them feel like they're the centre of attention where they can talk and share the important things in their life. And as I always say, remember to really listen, not advise. Feedback what you've heard, ask questions, and get curious about your quality time kid. Do you know, it actually doesn't take a long time to fill up a love tank. It can just take 10 to 15 minutes of great time spent together. On Christmas Day, don't forget to fill their love tank by taking the time out to look at the new book, play a new game, or just listen to how their day's going. My son also loves physical touch. Often children who love this language show it by constantly being in your space, which can be frustrating, playing with your hair, holding your hand, stroking your face. They love hugging, cuddling, high fives, and back scratches. After attending one of my workshops, Sue said to me, Oh my goodness, do you know the worst part is I am not a physical touch person and I've realised that my son is and now I'm going to have to hug him whenever he comes up to me because I can see it's really, really important. Another one of my friends said that her daughter used to want her to walk to school and pick her up because she wanted to hold her hand as they walked. Now my friend didn't really like that and so she said, I stopped walking her to school and I sent her with a friend. And now I feel really terrible. I can see that I've actually totally cut off that love connection between my child and myself. So guess what she's back doing every day. Now it's not always easy, but recognising our mistakes, taking on new information and making change is the most love that you can actually give anybody. As an adult, Jack loves a really good hug. Back in the day when he was younger, he got lots of hugs. But as the teen years came rolling in, hugging a teenager takes on a new dimension. You often think that no teen would ever really want a hug. However, the teen years are probably the most important to keep this physical touch up without overdoing it. If you pull back on physical touch and your child is a physical touch person, then they're not getting any of their love tank filled. And you don't want them going out and finding love in those places that isn't really good for them. For the love language physical touch offspring, this age group need to know they're loved, but in a less demonstrative way. You might experiment with things such as a pat on the back, touch on the shoulder, hug across the shoulders rather than a bear hug. Men and boys often arm wrestle or have play fights where their physical touch needs are met. Anything that's just gently physical, it doesn't need to be huge. Christmas time's a great time to fill up on the physical touch person's love tank with lots of physical gestures according to the age of your child. If you're aware of your child's individual needs, you'll know where they're at. My daughter Cassie has affirmations and gift giving. Now when we talk about affirmations, it doesn't have to be fake. Make sure you're not affirming them with, you're beautiful, you're good. Affirm the behaviours and the great outcomes, such as, thank you for sitting quietly while your aunt was here. You were really kind to Johnny today. Thanks for sharing your toys. I really appreciate your help when I needed the table setting. Thank you so much for helping with the dishes. It made me feel great. Make your affirmations sincere. Now, if you have a child that's always looking to hear something good about themselves, find something good to tell them. There's nothing worse for a child whose love language is affirmations than to be put down all the time. And believe me, sometimes I realise that you may not actually have that much good to tell them. But every kid does something right. It's your job to find out what that is. Kids in general will respond positively to positive language. Think about it. You as an adult. Someone sitting there saying, Oh my goodness, you're such a pain. You never help me. You're useless. Your room's always untidy. I can't believe you're sitting on the couch and not doing anything. Sounds pretty tough, doesn't it? I used to tell my children to tidy up their rooms and I would walk in and I'd think, oh my goodness, it still looks like a tip. What actually happened? I'd start to complain and then my daughter or son would point out the things that they had picked up and I realised that they had done something even if I couldn't really see it. 
So when I went back into their bedrooms from then on, even though I was still thinking, what a tip, because that's the first thing a parent sees is the things that it hasn't been done rather than things that have, I would try to look really hard. And then I would try my hardest not to be sarcastic. So I would say, thank you for getting all of those clothes in the clothes basket. That's excellent. Thank you for pulling up your blind. There's so much more light in the room. Thank you for pushing all your toys into one corner. Because if you can affirm some things, it doesn't make you feel good as a person. And then you tend to do more if you're feeling really good about what you're doing. This Christmas, without being facetious or dishonest, go into affirmation overload with your affirmation child and make them feel really loved. The next love language is gifts. When you think about gifts, don't think about expensive gifts necessarily. My daughter loves gifts. The person or the child that receives the gift feels loved just by the fact you thought about them. Now, unfortunately, she loves Diet Coke. And all I have to do is bring home a small bottle and she's beside herself with happiness. And do you know what's even more exciting is that now she's at her home, I can buy her a 24 pack of toilet paper or some washing powder and she's over the moon. How good is that? I never thought that my child would be excited about toilet paper. Of course, she does love an expensive gift too, don't get me wrong. So on special occasions, that makes the gift even more extraordinary. Remember to make sure that all gifts are nicely presented. Try to give some small gifts to that person as often as possible. For example, favourite chocolates, a card, soap, pick flowers from the garden if they like flowers, but do make it something that they will enjoy. Christmas is the gift love language child's heaven. Any gifts given with love and intent with the child in mind will make it special and your gift person will love it. Now acts of service. If you've got kids that are going around helping to tidy up and put their things in the right spots, who are looking after your needs, then they're probably acts of service. (laughs) My dream child. Just joking, just in case my kids are listening. Acts of service kids must be wonderful to have, but if you're a gifts parent or an affirmation parent or quality time, you might not notice your child setting the table or putting things away or tidying up their spaces. So please keep an eye out for this if you've got one of these children. I would love to have one in my house. How exciting. All the acts of service and tidying up would have been brilliant. So do make sure that if you have an acts of service child, they're rewarded and thanked and congratulated. If you're not the acts of service person yourself, just pretend. Help them to be acts of service. Do things together with them. Tidy their bedroom up. Help let them help you make things and put things away. Don't get rid of them from helping you out. Engage them in tasks where they can do things. I remember a friend of mine who was very much acts of service and her son loved affirmations and she was really struggling with him. And I said to her, you know what? All you need to do is praise him and you'll see him shine. She said, I've got nothing to praise him for. A couple of weeks later, they came over to my house and she'd been tidying up in the garden. Admittedly, she'd initially offered pocket money to get James to help her. However, he had helped her out for the whole afternoon. She was so happy. Her acts of service love tank was full. Someone had finally helped her. She put her arm around him and said, I am so happy with James. He came outside and he helped me and I felt so good. James straightened up. His whole face shone because he was being affirmed. Unknowingly, both different love tanks were full. They'd come a full circle. He felt loved. And she did too. Acts of service children feel loved when they're cared for in an everyday sense, such as helping with their homework. They appreciate meals that are made for them. They comment if you've fixed or tidied up something for them. These are the things that will fill their love tank. So on Christmas Day, if they seek your help to make a puzzle, bake a cake, build a tower, fix something that's broken, your attention and effort will help them in any way to show your love this Christmas. Now, when all else fails, sit down and have a conversation with your children about different love languages. At the age of 16, I sat down with Cassie and we did the love language quiz. The link will be in the show notes. We discussed which one she felt she was, and as I'd assumed, they were affirmation and gift giving. I explained to her that her father and I were acts of service people. And I said, do you know what annoys us the most of all? Is when you're in the lounge at night with your friends and we've done everything for you. With love, mind you. 
We've cooked and brought you all drinks and then we've tidied our kitchen and gone to bed. We wake up the next day, the kitchen is a mess and all we do is spend the morning cleaning up and complaining about you. And when you emerge at 11 in the morning, you're hit by a barrage of anger and disappointment. How could you leave such a mess last night when we tidied up? You get angry and walk off because you're not receiving any affirmation. We all feel unhappy and unloved. Then we discussed what she could do about it. From here on in, every time Cassie had friends over, the following morning the kitchen would be clean and tidy. We had nothing to say, but great things. She was affirmed and we were happy too. Even today, at 28 years old, if I'm having people to dinner, she would set the table unasked and send me a photo of it. I'm loved. I wrote back and thank her and tell her how grateful I am. See how it works? If we can fill each other's love tanks, how much happier will we all be? If you can gift every member of your family their love language this Christmas, not only will there be a plethora of gifts, but there will also be a whole lot of full love tanks and happy hearts as well. I'm Kate Mason. Thank you for listening to Parenting and Personalities. If you enjoy this episode, we'd love it if you could leave a rating and a review that would help others learn about the podcast. If you're interested in discovering more about you and your family's personality types, you'll find my book, Who Is This Monster or Treasure in My House, on Booktopia or Amazon. If you have an episode idea, please send a note to thepersonalitycoach at gmail.com. Many thanks, and we'll see you next time. Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.